what we say, is just one tool of war. You can fight through other means. And Russia is doing exactly that. It is fighting a gas war. It has weaponized energy. It is the biggest energy supplier to Europe. And earlier this month, it cut off natural gas supplies to Europe. The Nord Stream pipeline was shut down. Russia said this was for maintenance, but it gave Europe sleepless nights. The fear was that Russia would permanently block gas supplies. The statements from Moscow fueled this fear. Today, Russia has restarted Nord Stream 1 supplies, but not to the full capacity. Europe is not taking chances anymore. It has unveiled an emergency plan. Our next report has the details. Russia has slashed gas exports to Europe. After the war began in Ukraine, Moscow reduced supply to European states. The EU fears that Russia could now completely shut off the supply. Russia is blackmailing us. Russia is using energy as a weapon. And therefore, in any event, whether it's a partial major cutoff of Russian gas or total cutoff of Russian gas, Europe needs to be ready. The European Union is preparing for the worst. A plan has been proposed. The bloc wants European nations to cut their natural gas consumption. The target is to reduce usage by 15% over the next eight months. But not everyone is on board with the idea. Spain has refused to comply. Portugal says it is totally against the proposal. For now, the cuts are voluntary, but Europe remains vulnerable. Gas supply from Russia's Nord Stream has resumed, but the pipeline is not operating at full capacity. Germany has sent a message to its European allies. It believes that Russia is engaging in hybrid warfare, and Russia is weaponizing gas supplies. Indeed, today underlines, even if there's an announcement that gas is flowing again, that this war isn't only being conducted with weapons against Ukraine, but that hybrid warfare means also using energy dependency as a means of war. Moscow is pushing back against Europe's charges. The Kremlin has spoken out. It says the state-owned energy giant Gazprom is a reliable supplier. But Moscow warned that the future supply might not be steady. Russia claims that Western sanctions are hampering the maintenance of the pipeline. The president said clearly in Tehran that Gazprom has fulfilled, is fulfilling and will continue to fulfill all of its obligations. Any related technical issues are the result of restrictions introduced by European countries themselves or the European Union to be more specific. Those restrictions do not allow the equipment to be fixed, including turbines at compression stations. Exactly those very restrictions led to the fact that the machines cannot receive the necessary servicing. Earlier, Russia had cut off its supplies to some countries. Poland, Bulgaria, Finland, Denmark and the Netherlands no longer get Russian gas. They refuse to pay their bills in rubles. Now Russia is squeezing Europe even harder. In June, it slashed exports to 40% of their capacity. The writing is on the wall for Europe. There is a clear threat to its gas supplies. All praises, infinite honor and glory be to Yahweh Shem Yabashai, who is the God of heaven and earth and of the 12 tribes of Israel, which are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans today. And Israelite foreigners are scattered amongst the heathen, Double honor is always some yard to the elder apostles of Great Millstone. Peace, love, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect. Habayath, Madabada, the house of David, the brothers laboring day in and day out to make their calling of election sure, helping seal the elect of the nation of Israel for the return of our Lord of Mashiach Yabashai is at hand, and to the Akimin Akwaf, the Akyawa Akwaf Yah, who listen and believe on the glorious gospel of Yahweh Yabashai to you. I say Shalom. So this will be very brief. As you saw the video, which is the premise of the lesson and what was spoken of, you know, in um, and what I'm going to make a few quick points with before I close the video out is what we what we saw in the video in the rhetoric between the the EU, um, the European Union and um, with Russia about the Nord Stream one. All of that really ties back to. There's a war being waged over resources. So there's a war of resources going on before the actual um, fighting of World War III happens. There's always proxy wars. And what was said also in the video was that there was a hybrid war, you know, which really just goes into a proxy war. But this war is a war over resources. 
So um, this is also going into the energy insecurity, energy insecurity in a war of resources. I just wanted to, to throw those points in. Now, when you look up energy insecurity, which is how this war is being waged so far, um, and you see that I have this article here on the screen. These are, this is just recent um, Vladimir Putin. He said, warns that the, the West's current world order is over and the new era is coming. So now you see these nations puffing at Babylon the Great, right? Which Babylon, the um, the whore, rides on, on the back of the beast, which is the EU and NATO. When you read in the book of Revelation, you know, making reference, you know, to the beast, the beast system. So this, these are the words of Vladimir Putin just recently. He says the West uh, order is over. It's coming to an end. So this is a witness against the, the, the fall of Babylon and um, and its closest allies, which as of as of now, that's still the European Union and NATO, right? The, the EU and NATO. Now, what's important about this is this war of resources, this energy and security. When you go into the word energy, security and insecurity, it's the association between national security and nation security, which is going into protection and the availability of natural resources for energy consumption. So this energy insecurity goes to the fact that when a nation doesn't have the ability, you know, to heat and cool itself and it relies on other nations for other resources, whether that's a nation that's reliant upon, you know, food, you know, uh, or a nation that's reliant upon um, uh, security when it comes to not having, you know, an ICBM being a nation is not of the, the G20 or one of the nations that has that has the capabilities to protect itself by having the ICBMs as, as you know, the top nations on the planet do. The Russias, the Indias, the Chinas, America, um, Iran, North Korea, these particular nations. You can also throw Pakistan in there because they have those abilities and the European uh, nations going into uh, the, uh, the UK, Great Britain, France, Germany, Italy, so on and so forth. So now... Being insecure, not having security, is when you are vulnerable. So now we see energy and security is the association between national security and the availability of natural resources for energy consumption, which clearly Europe lacks natural resources. That's why in the scriptures is referred to as the bottomless pit, which we'll get that here in a second. But continuing on, it says access to relatively cheap energy has become essential to the functioning of modern economy. So in order to function in this modern world, right, you have to be um, energy secure, not insecure. Because if not, it's going to cause many problems as we continue to read. It says, however, the uneven distribution of energy supplies among countries has led to significant vulnerabilities, meaning one of those countries that consumes the most energy is America. It consumes the most energy. So that's the uneven distribution of energy supplies. There's other nations that there's nowhere and that's not even, you know, uh, you know, a hundredth. There's nations that don't even use a hundredth of the kind of energy that America uses. America uses more energy than all the different uh, specific nations. So it consumes a lot of what? A lot of the energy that's out on the market. Whether that's gas, oil, petroleum, etc., so on and so forth. So now, it says the uneven distribution of energy supplies among countries, it says, has led to significant vulnerabilities, and those vulnerabilities is the friction between we see right now where Russia, you know, Europe is saying that Russia is blackmailing them. That was that's what was on the video. Let me go back to it, right here. It says Europe. Russia is blackmailing us. They feel like they're being blackmailed. Why? Because of the lack of energy security, the insecurity, the energy insecurity, I should say. Now it goes on to say, going into the definition of energy security and insecurity, it goes on to say, international energy relations have contributed to the globalization of the world leading to energy security and energy vulnerability at the same time. 
So you have a lot of nations, as we see the European Union, they're not energy secure because, and this is all through the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh one of the main reasons they're not is because the, the, the land mass that they occupy doesn't have many natural resources. And let's show that. This is the book of Revelation 9 and 2. I'll just start there. 9 verse 1. I'll start at verse 1. It says, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from, from heaven unto the earth. And to him, it says, was given the key of the bottomless pit. So now the key of the bottomless pit. Now, the bottomless pit, is this is a landmass, and this is known as Europe. So it says bottomless pit here because this is all written metaphorically, but it's referring to, to, to Europe, right? Revelation 9 and 2, and he opened the bottomless pit. This is being making reference to Europe, right? And there arose a smoke out of the pit as a smoke of a great furnace. And this was basically World War I. The fighting of World War I that happened, you know, a, a great deal of in Europe. It says in the sun... And the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. This was the, the, the fighting that went on that ensued in World War I. Now, there's other precepts that go into this bottomless pit. Let's get another one. This is the book of Revelation, the 11th chapter, the 7th verse. It says, and when they shall have finished their testimony, it says the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit. So this is once again making reference to Europe, making reference to, to the wicked. To Esau Edom. It says they would ascend out of the bottomless pit. It says, shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Speaking of the elect. And that testimony is speaking about the, the, the two witnesses. Right? Those are the, the two witnesses, which is getting into the northern and the southern kingdom. So now we see the bottomless pit. And it's, it's mentioned other times. I just wanted to touch on a few. The bottomless pit is making reference once again to Europe and <clears throat> this bottomless pit doesn't have it's called a bottomless pit because it doesn't it lacks natural resources and we see that because we see that they're not energy secure they're energy dependent upon who Russia who has a lot of natural resources in its land so now let's show that further and close it out this is the book of second Ezra this is second Ezra the fifth chapter second Ezra 5 and I'll start at verse 22, and it says, And my soul recovered the spirit of understanding, and I began to talk with the Most High. And this is the, the prophet Ezra, or Ezra, speaking here. Verse 23, And said, O Adawan, that bears rule of every wood of the earth, and of all the trees thereof, thou hast chosen the one only vine. Verse 24, And of all the lands of the whole world, thou hast chosen thee, one pit, and that's the bottomless pit. That's a, a precept showing you that this pit, this is making reference to Israel, but the, that pits are known as land masses when you read through the Bible. Second Ezra 5 and 24, and of all the lands of the whole world, see, this is making reference to lands, land masses. Thou hast chosen thee one pit, and that one pit is speaking of who? It's speaking here of the bottomless pit, which that lines up with the, the precepts that were just brought out in the book of Revelation. So that pit, the bottomless pit, is what lacks natural resources, which is, you know, um, currently what is known as Europe. So with that, I hope that was edifying. Barakat the Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh, Kohalo Yim La, Allah Hayanawa Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh, Ba'ashim Rakakwadash, double honor. As always, from Yah to the elder apostles of Great Bill of Great Millstone. Peace, love, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect. Habayath, my daughter, da, the house of David, the brothers laboring, day in and day out, to make their calling of election sure. Help us seal the elect of the nation of Israel for the return of our Lord. Allah Hayyanawa, Yahweh Bashim Yamashai is at hand, and to the Akim and Akwath, the Akyawa Akwath Yah that listen and believe on the glorious gospel of Yahweh Bashim Yamashai is being preached worldwide until you I say Shalom. So Shalom to the hopeful elect.